Good morning, folks. Today's top stories hit seismicity, space weather and human health, space weather and climate forcing, and another look at an ongoing indication of Earth's pole shift. We'll discuss the sun as well, look at the size of the active region on the south, Earth's scale comparison to the north. But it hasn't produced large flares, and we're going to see why. Let's start with that examination at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively calm, given the multitude and enormity of the features. Coronal holes remain absent, and so we focus on the active regions. They have not been producing large solar flares, as I said, and this is because of their magnetic complex. The big set of sunspots on the south has a mostly benign magnetic field setup. No interaction potential with the largest umbra, separation of the magnetism to the left in the caboose, and to the south we do see the only minor potential for magnetic interaction, gamma classification to that southern portion because of the blue patch to the north of the red that is separated from the rest of its light-colored sunspots to the south. The only note in the solar wind is the phi angle flip up in blue. Even with decreasing plasma pressure, purple, the solar wind magnetic reversal is trying to keep the KP, green bars down at the bottom, up off the floor. Volcanic activity is increasing in Indonesia. Two surges in either eruptive phase or seismic signal below, including at Mount Merapi. Speaking of seismic signals, here they are trying to figure out why the few big seismic events that don't give themselves away indeed fail to produce an electromagnetic signal beforehand. Fluids both trap and dampen electric fields and current. New study confirms the immune hitting force of space travel. They can't yet determine in their experiment if the microgravity or cosmic energy caused any or which or all of the problems. But we have seen this immune degradation with cosmic rays before. We've hit the modern cosmic ray maximum recently due to Earth's weakening magnetic field, and it's only going to get worse. But stow that and belay the disaster chatter for a moment of climatology. Sudden stratospheric warmings. They play such an enormous role in various atmospheric phenomena. New paper here details the ever-expanding known influence, and of course, they are strongly modulated by the sun when it presents activity on either of the extremes. By the way, textbook readers, that space weather and health stuff from a bit ago is chapter 6. An excellent review in Nature Climate Change uses a complex analysis to arrive at a simple conclusion. The newest climate models have been widely adopted and used to change global policy, but in terms of predicting climate change, Calling it some mixed successes is definitely the most generous they could get away with. Climate Playlist on our channel has more information on this topic than you would imagine. Back to catastrophe as last but not least, we have more of the effects of the super ozone loss event earlier this year. The UV data is in, with some periods presenting up to a 75% increase in solar UV than what was expected. Now luckily, these were short-lived, and they occurred in patches during the early morning or evening hours locally, reducing the solar angle and ultimate effect, but folks, this is bad. They want to blame the record polar vortex weakness, but those don't just happen. Ozone-killing chemicals are reduced worldwide, and allegedly global warming should be tightening up that vortex. Sadly, the upper atmospheric energetic flows and the ozone loss are driven by the ongoing magnetic field shift at Earth our protection from space is fading away. Approximately every 12,000 years we have this event. The last one devastated the Americas. The one before saw the disappearance of humans from a West African stronghold where they had thrived for 40,000 years. Before that it was extinctions across the Asian region. Le Champ before that was globally devastating and the list is actually longer than I even have room for here. And it's not only time for another, but the magnetic poles have begun to shift at Earth. South Pole left Antarctica and the North has shot over the top to head southward towards their Indian Ocean meeting place. Their motions keep accelerating and the same goes for Earth's magnetic field loss. From 5% loss per century according to NASA around the year 2000 to 5% per decade in 2010 according to the ESA, continuing to weaken and providing further evidence of accelerations, bringing us to the brink of the downward slide which has been predicted to continue by scientists as well as the observations and the entire magnetic history of our planet. Enjoy electricity while you can. Folks, we greatly appreciate all of your support 
and we are loving your design entries for the Observer Focused Campground Contest. Everything from the art to the campground names to the features of the camp and the features that would be good for observer gatherings and learning hands-on about the things we're going to need in the future. Deadline is tomorrow. Link below to the contest details at observatoryproject.com. Our books and more are at otf.cells.com. Cute little Lulu has landed as well for those into our children's books on space. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.